Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Are you looking for a really beautiful English symphony that hasn't been done to death, that's part of sort of the Vaughn Williams-y, folksy tradition, but not exactly, that has its own original qualities? Then you need Ernest John Moran's Symphony in G Minor. Now, Moran did not write a heck of a lot of music. He only lived to be 56. Let me look at his dates here. They were 1894 to 1950. He was a major league alcoholic, although he died of a cerebral hemorrhage by falling into the river Kenmare. They thought he drowned, but then they found out that the cerebral hemorrhage is what did him in before he hit the water. But he was a heavy, heavy drinker, which impacted his creativity, as so many of his colleagues were, it seemed that that whole generation. I mean, think about it. You had Peter Warlock and John Ireland and Constant Lambert and Moran, and and they, they just drank like fish, and, you know, it wasn't a good thing. But he did write a series of very, very beautiful orchestral and chamber works um, before his untimely end. And they've all been recorded now, at least the orchestral works have, and they're they're quite quite lovely. They fit on, on three or four CDs, and you can find them on labels like Chandos and Naxos and a few others. He only wrote one symphony. He was working on a second when he died, but he was never able to complete it. Uh, the first symphony in G minor is one of those interwar pieces, like Walton's first, you know, that have a uh, uh, certain tension to them, Vaughan Williams' fourth, you know, that really have, uh, they capture somehow the unease of the times. And it's, it's an extremely beautiful work, heavily, heavily indebted to the example of Sibelius. I want to play you a couple examples of it, just so you can get a sense of, of what I mean. But here's the opening, which is you know, extremely beautiful. And, I, you know, it, it instantly tells you that it's an English work of its period, but a very, very good one. Beautiful, isn't it? It's really, really quite, quite wonderful. And it has four big movements, the finale of which sounds rather like tapiola played sideways, I always said. You know, you just, you hear the influences. The scherzo, too, is quite Sibelian. It sounds a bit like the scherzo from the fourth symphony attached to the opening of the fifth symphony. Let me put it, let me play you just the opening so you see what I mean. Get it? Anyway, despite these influences, the piece the piece is full of original touches, and you know it's just good music. So who cares? I mean, if he's if he's influenced, Walton was influenced by Sibelius too. So many composers were. Anyway, there have been five recordings that I know of um, that, and I'm going to talk about three. The one we just heard samples. This was David Lloyd Jones with the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra on Naxos, and those are one of the three. Sort of recommendable ones. The other two are a little harder to source. The first was Leslie Howard, who conducted the premiere in 1938. He made a recording in the early 1940s, which has been reissued on Dutton. It's a very good performance, but obviously being a historical recording, the sonics are limited. And you know, like most colorful, romantic, big pieces, you really need to hear what the orchestra is doing. Although if you know the work, it's definitely that's definitely a performance to hear because it's extremely authoritative and beautifully done. Then there was a recording by Neville Dilks on the HMV Greensleeves budget label. Remember that back on the LP days? Well, 
you probably won't find it anymore. Although having said that, I know there are some of you out there who will find a place, a way to source it. It may be on YouTube for all I know. However, there are three really good, readily available, as far as I know, modern recordings that are worth your consideration. The first was the one we just heard. It's with David Lloyd Jones, the Bournemouth Symphony on Naxos, coupled to uh, Moran's Sinfonietta, which is an absolutely delightful piece. Uh, one of his you know, later works from 1940. Very, very good music. It, it, the guy was a solid, rock solid composer when he was sober. Anyway, the only issue with this performance that I have, quite frankly, is that it strikes me as a little quick, a little bit on the fast side, which means that there are rapid string figurations, for example, in the first movement that come across as a little bit scrambled here because they're driven so hard. And the finale could be scarier. I mean, the finale is tragic and dark and sounds like I said, like the creepier bits of tapiola. And it needs to be have, have very brooding. It needs to have a lot of atmosphere. And this is a little bit matter of fact. But if this is the one you find, you won't be sorry. It's a lovely performance. However, better still, in my view, is Vernon Handley with the Ulster Orchestra. This was the go-to recording because the one I'll talk about in a moment was unavailable for a while. But it's back, so we'll get to it. This is coupled with the Rhapsody for Piano and Orchestra. Also a wonderful piece. One of those fabulous short works of which there are a billion that you'll never hear in concert because they're too short to be a concerto. I, I, I so wish some pianist would put together a concerto length grouping of three or four short piano and orchestra pieces and, and just do it. The problem is you can't get conductors who will conduct it because you can't program them because they won't. Hey, never mind. It's, that's a whole nother topic. Anyway, this is a first class performance of the symphony. I find it a little weightier and more atmospheric than David Lloyd Jones here, and I like it better. It's also sonically terrific, as most of you know the Chandos Ulster recordings were. So if you find this one, uh, you're in great shape. The only issue I have is that the Sinfonietta, um, I think, is a better coupling than the Rhapsody. Maybe it depends on how you feel about Moran's music generally and you know what other discs you may want to get but again you can't go wrong however the best recording of the symphony in g minor was and is adrian bolt good old sir adrian frankly he never made a finer recording this also contains the sinfonietta and the overture for a mask, which means it's probably the best deal of all of them. It was originally issued on Lyrita. The symphony was separate. The other things were on a different disc. It's one of those, you know, those, those Lyrita recordings were so beautiful sonically. I mean, it was like the apotheosis of what analog recording could be. And it still sounds just as good as it ever did. And the other works are uh, make a terrific bonus. And, you know, Bolt, there were, he, he, he was one of those conductors, you know, in, in English music, he was very, very authoritative. He could be a little bit casual and lax and, you know, let the tension sag, but he doesn't hear. He's absolutely on top of the piece at every moment and he secures perfectly fabulous playing. This one is with uh, the New Philharmonia, actually. Um, the, other, the other pieces are with the London Philharmonic you know, Bolt's own orchestra, you won't hear a more beautiful performance of this incredibly beautiful symphony, nor one recorded and engineered with such fidelity. I mean, it's such a beautiful disc just to listen to for the sound. You know, you'll, 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 you just listen to it and you go, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what an orchestra is supposed to sound like. Oh, baby. So for all of those reasons, I can't recommend strongly enough the Symphony in G Minor by E.J. Moran, conducted by Adrian Bolt. And because there are only five recordings we need to deal with, we get to end this chat far more quickly than is normally the case when we go through one of these discographic things. I do hope you'll give the symphony a shot and let me know what you think. It's a wonderful, wonderful work. Um, you'll wish he'd written more, but be thankful for what we have. Anyway, keep on listening. Thank you. And if you enjoyed this chat, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a look at the other reviews on classicstoday.com. All of these discs are uh, available for review there too. And you can read the reviews as well as hear me talk. 
All the best.